so right now there's a large gap between, let's say, the marketplace and the corporate world and the universities. And we've been trying to fill that gap uh, from the entrepreneurship side alone on the university side. The problem is that a lot of the information you need to understand about applications and implementation lie over with corporations and companies. And the closer that we can bring corporations to the university, the better it is for everyone. Uh, one thing is the corporations indirectly influence the birth of the idea uh, in the university, which means the chances for successful uh, innovation is much higher. So even though we're not going to return probably to the days of Bell Laboratories because just of economics and, and speed of innovation, things like that, um, there are ways in which we can still bring all those elements together across the university corporate interface. When we look at the innovation process, it's the same process whether it's uh, short term and incremental or whether it's long term, uh, you know, currently using the term, you know, research. Uh, it, it's actually the same process of iterating between market application, implementation, uh, and technology. It's just that when you want to have a larger innovation, you need to actually consider and open up more uncertainty in each of those areas. So you could say, well, there's a whole range of technology and science I need to look at that I don't quite understand, but it's still confined to some area, and it could probably address these kinds of applications. You can see already that, okay, I'm going to do research, and over time, you know, I let these things influence each other. Uh, that time period, even from, let's say, I build a prototype where I know it's valuable, uh, and it's very fundamental, a fundamental shift, a fundamental uh, technology and, and innovation, then we find that um, if you look at the data, it, at a minimum it's 10 or 15 years to uh, first commercial dollars. So uh, in today's world, that's been very difficult to, to support and to keep constant over the required period of time to move those innovations and in across, say, a university corporate gap. Incremental innovation, which is the other end of that, uh, is more innovations that are, that are uh, one, two, three years out. And we never really have to worry about those because uh, traditional methods of looking at risk and finance pretty much um, allow you to introduce uncertainty only into one element, like to say technology. So if you look at the iPhone 5 versus the iPhone 6, you can change a piece of technology, but the market application and the business models, the industry implementation, they're all the same. So that kind of innovation, when you kind of do incremental jumps, uh, uh, really is constant over time and, and, and isn't really affected by anything else. Fundamental innovation, which needs to go over 10 or 15 years, is influenced by all sorts of parameters that in the short term you may not think are important and you may not see the effect, but then because they impact what's happening over this 10 or 15 years, um, you'll see the effect uh, you know, far down the road. And an example of that is the sort of corporate investment, you know, CapEx and R&D spending that uh, is more towards the future. You won't see that in the short term, but that lack of investment over time has cut off the more fundamental innovations that are required for very high economic growth.